Hi guys, welcome back to our channel. This is R and R, Richard and Ronya. Hello. And we are going to be talking about tips and tricks for beginners uh, for investing today. Um, if you clicked on this channel, then you know that we talk about investing, travel, food, relationships, and um, we're just going to get right on into it. So if you clicked on the video, then you've already established tip number one, which is going to be deciding to invest. That's right. So if you clicked on this video, then that means you have some type of interest. Maybe you've already started investing and you're just kind of looking for uh, extra tips to really get your investing going. That's right. So that's uh, tip number one. We're going to be doing tips one through 10 today. All right. All right. And moving on to tip number two. Tip number two is decide what type of um, risk tolerance you have. Are you a risk taker or are you someone who likes to play it safe? Um, this basically is determined based upon your, um, I guess, your willingness to place money into the market. Um, and if you're willing to lose it all for a major gain, then you'll be a major risk taker. If you're someone who wants to preserve your capital or preserve your money that you place into the market while still wanting to gain a little bit, then you're going to be more of a conservative or a, um, some, a person that likes to play it safe. Um, someone who is a full out risk taker, they consider that to be an aggressive investor. Someone who is a person who likes to play it safe, they're going to be considered to be someone who is a conservative investor. If you're a little bit of both, which we are, you're going to be moderate investors. So you're going to be one to play it safe in some areas and going to be willing to take risk in other areas. So that's um, the, the number two, tip number two. All right. And we're going to get right on into tip number three, which is set a budget. This that's is my right. favorite thing Very to important. do. Um, if you're a single parent, if you're a couple, if you're in college, if you're... Um, you know, someone that's retired, right. it's always good no matter what age or what genre you are in, it's to set a budget. Um, that's the very first thing that we did as far as early on in the beginning. We yeah. decided what our budget was, what our mortgage was. We already deduct that from it, how much we spend on groceries, how much we yeah. spend on our gas, going back and forth to work in other locations and destinations. So always set a budget first before yes. you really get into this and see how much money you have extra after you've taken care of all of your bills. Yes, and just very quickly, um, there is a major misconception that you have to have thousands of dollars to get um, started with investing. You really don't. Um, you don't. We'll talk about a little bit later. There are apps out there where you can start off with as little as $5 and you can begin to invest and see your money grow much faster than you would be able to see it grow with just placing that into a savings account. So we'll talk more about that a little bit later. Um, step number four, um, decide what do you like? What do you like to invest in? Um, what's your, what's your, um, what's your passion? What do you like? Do you like clothes? Do you like to travel? Um, do you like um, to just um, be entertained? Like, you know, you just have to decide what you like to invest in because um, we'll talk a little bit later towards the end of the video. Um, it's going to be very important that you invest in something that you're interested in because it's going to take a lot of research, especially when you're placing your money or your confidence in a company. Um, mm -hmm. You actually become part owner of a company um, when, once you own shares in that company. So you want to make sure that you're placing your money somewhere that you feel that it's going to be safe. You feel that it's going to grow and you feel that it's going to benefit yourself as well as the company. So moving right along. All right, we have step number five, which is going to be set a goal. Um, when we talk about goals, we want to talk about, are you wanting to invest long term or are you wanting yes. to invest short term? Um, and, and don't get confused with what my definition of short term is right. it may be different than what your definition of short term. My definition of short term could be six months to a year versus your definition of a short term could be one to three months. Exactly. So it does vary, but uh, you want to decide what are you going to be investing for? Are you investing for the long haul term, you know, long term duration? Or are you wanting something just kind of quick and fast and easy, just short term? And um, either way, it's there's no right or wrong to long-term investing or short-term investing. Either way, it's going to benefit you directly or indirectly. Um, long-term, which is something that I'm a little bit more passionate about, is just because it may not 
directly affect me, but it'll yeah. indirectly affect me because long term can benefit maybe my grandchildren or my great grandchildren versus short term be something that would be benefiting us directly right, right now in the moment. Yeah. All right, babe. Quick break. What number are we on? <laughs> no, for real. Yeah. That again, was can... number. You're getting ready Cause... to number six. Okay. Because we you got can... confused because like you did number three for number three and I like. Okay. Let's so just... no, it's cool. We can we can still you know start it back. Because we can keep that footage, but I'm just like, I don't want to call out the wrong number, and then it's like, not... It's recording. Okay. All right. Going to get right on into step number six. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know you were supposed to be saying anything. That's what I'm like. No, I was like, step number six. I said, all right, we're getting ready to go into step number six. He's like... Just step number six, man. All right, step number six. <laughs> Let me know Come when on. you're ready. Whenever you're ready. Are you ready? I've been ready. You laughing. Because <laughs> you weren't ready. All right, step number six. Learn about ETFs or exchange-traded funds. Mm -hmm. um, this was very beneficial to us when we first um, began investing um, because there are some stocks out there that are a thousand dollars five hundred dollars to three hundred dollars per share and when you're just getting started out you may not feel confident enough to just drop that much money on one share of stock yeah. what an ETF does is basically it allows you to purchase a portion of that a thousand dollar um, Amazon stock a portion of that you know a um, hundred two hundred dollar Apple stock a portion of that three hundred dollar Tesla stock all in one um, exchange traded fund um, most ETFs, you can purchase portions of ETFs for as little as $5. And we'll yeah. discuss with you in just a few seconds um, with the different platforms that you can use to purchase those ETFs. If that was a little bit too complicated for you, we're going to let Ronya explain to you a little bit better, hopefully, and put it into layman terms. <laughs> All right, guys. Thank you for that little You're intro. You're welcome. Okay, so <laughs> basically, if you're not uh, lingo savvy like me, you're like, what the heck is an ETF? Okay, so the way that I personally think of an ETF is I think of a pizza pie. Yeah. So if you go to Papa John's or Pizza Hut or Little Caesars, whatever is your preference, um, think of the whole pie. Mm -hmm. Now, if you get a pepperoni pizza pie, let's just do pepperoni, and you take one slice out of that pie, you're still getting the pepperoni, you're still getting the cheese, you're still getting the crust. Right. And you're still getting the tomato sauce. So you have four ingredients or four separate items. Did oh, I buy the God. whole pie? No. I just took a slice out of the pie, mm -hmm. but I still have the four items inside of that exactly. pie. And that's the way that an ETF works. You can purchase um, smaller portions, but get you know different um, stocks out of that portion exactly. instead of buying the entire stock. So instead of me buying a whole stock of Amazon or a whole stock of Google, mm -hmm. I could buy a, a purchase portion. of a, a small portion of it, but I'll have other stocks as well exactly. of, outside of just Amazon and Google. I could have Amazon, Google, Nike, and uh, Reebok, for instance, yeah. inside of this one special small portion, but I'm getting four different stocks out of it. That's right. Um, and that also, um, in most cases, spreads your risk out a little bit more, too, mm -hmm. because if one of those companies decides it's not going to do good or people decide they're going to pull their money out of that company and the stock drops, then guess what? You have two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten other stocks that uh, can potentially still be doing good and spread your risk out. So that's always a good thing. All right, moving right along to number seven, our top brokerage accounts. Now, um, in order to invest in the stock market, you may know and you may not know that you have to go through a brokerage account. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, now, when you do that, you have to actually. She was bouncing. Come on. It's okay. No, you took me off. <laughs> no, I didn't. Yes, you did. Cause I thought I was doing the wrong one. No, you weren't. You're doing. Guys, he's doing fine, isn't he? No. Um. <laughs> No. You're going to have to cut that out. 
I'm going to just do the whole number. Okay. But I was trying to stop but you because you kept But bouncing. then they couldn't see me. <laughs> but you throw me off when you keep doing this. All right. <laughs> I'm not done with this crap. All right. <laughs> Babe. You caught it crap. <laughs> okay. All right. Oh man, dang, I'm hungry, man. Okay. All right, man, come on. All right. Let me get this job. <laughs> I'm leaving this in there, too. No, you're not. Yeah, it's funny. <laughs> it's <not. laughs> this ain't funny, man. Hold on. Let me jock up. All right, here, hold on back. All right, we're good. Oh, seven. <laughs> <laughs> All right, number seven, our top brokerage. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> brokerage. Oh, oh my gosh. Okay, okay. All right. Ooh, okay. <clears throat> <laughs> okay. All right, number seven, our top brokerage accounts. Yeah, all right? Okay. Our top brokerage accounts. Number seven. Um, in order to get started investing with the stock market, you have to go through a brokerage account. You can't just go to Apple and say, hey, I want to buy one share of your stock. It doesn't work like that. There's always a representative um, on each company's behalf that actually um, goes to the market and purchases that stock for you, whether it's one share, two share, a thousand shares. So um, the brokerage accounts that we've been using, um, first and foremost, what we started out with um, was TD Ameritrade. Um, you may have heard of it before. It's one of the um, top brokerage accounts um, out there. If I can get this to work right. Okay, open. All right, so okay. this is just an example um, of how the TD Ameritrade interface looks. Um, it's very helpful. Um, it provides different um, graphs, um, pages for research mm -hmm. um, on different stocks and accounts. Um, we really like it and we have used it extensively um the only reason why the downside yeah and the only yeah the only downside to it is um that they charge um a brokerage fee for yeah. each transaction um not for each share but each transaction um that you make even if it's just one share they're going to charge you six dollars and 95 cents mm -hmm. cents for that one transaction so it can get a little costly, especially if you just want to buy one or two shares of stocks yeah. here and there. You know, that fee can be a little costly. Yeah. Um, so we can move right on into number two. Yeah, second. yeah number two um, is Robinhood. Um, Robinhood is basically, um, it works off the same concept. Um, this is an example of, uh, of Robinhood here. Okay, so that's just their interface. That's how it looks. It's very simple. Mm -hmm. um, with Robinhood, there's no brokerage fee. Um, you're free to purchase as many shares or as little shares as you, as you like. Mm -hmm. As long as you have the money available to purchase those shares, that's all you're going to be charged. That's it. Um, number three, as we were just talking about ETFs, what we use to purchase our ETFs is a new, um, pretty much new, it's been out for a couple years now, yeah. an innovative um, app. It's called Stash Invest, okay? Um, this allows you to do the same thing that we were talking about before by portions of these companies that you may not want to or you may not have the availability or the funds to um, purchase full shares of these stocks. This is the interface here, how it looks. Yep. Um, and the way that they, um, their platform, they basically allow you to invest in the different um, things that you may like, whether it's travel, whether it's um, tech, whether it's um, any type of clean energy, um, anything that you can think of, they have different ETFs with cool names that you can um, look into and purchase with, for as little as $5. Um, and last but not least, we've actually left a link down in the description box that would allow you to um, receive $5 if you click that link for Stash Invest to get yeah. you started get with started, investing. Guys. So, hey, you can't go wrong with that. So definitely check it out, okay? Yep. All right. All right. So that's going to lead us into step number eight. Yes. Which is do your own research. Very important. Um, we should have mentioned it at the beginning of the video, but we'll yeah. make sure we mention it now. We are not professionals. Not at all. Uh, we do have careers outside of YouTube, outside of investing. 
that we would like you guys to know that it's very important to do your own research. Yes. Um, and that's really in anything in life. Um, mm -hmm. If a professor in school tells you something is, you know, this, well, go ahead and do your research yeah. and see why it's that. Because yeah. you know what? The professor, the professor might be wrong. That could go for your instructors, uh, people at work, you know, mm -hmm. anything. Just do your own research and just try to figure out things and see what's going to work best for you. That's right. Um, so, yeah, just do your own research and um, we'll make sure that we give you guys our tips and tricks. Um, not our tips and tricks, no. but our top three picks right, 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 every right. month towards the end of the month. <laughs> and also, whenever we do those videos, we want you to still go ahead and do your research, make your own informed decision on things that we might say we're looking at investing for these uh these stocks but you might not want to invest in yeah. them or vice versa we may say these stocks are ones that we're going to hold off on investing you might say i want to take that risk i want to invest in that so yeah just whatever you see whether it's us or anybody else on youtube or any other um things that you do just do your own research and make your that's own right. informed decision that's right that's very important um, moving right along to number nine, patience is key. That's just in life in general, but especially in the stock market. Um, you have to be very patient. You're not going to get rich overnight, especially if you're considering being a uh, or becoming a long-term investor. This is something that's going to eventually compound and gain you um, wealth over time, mm -hmm. years and years and years. And you, you, you have to think about not only yourself, but also... Um, your kids, your kids, kids, like, you know, you want to um, allow them to live a easier life than you lived. If they want to just become a business owner and just, you know, want to have ten, twenty thousand dollars to start a business, you want to be able to do that for mm -hmm. them, or, you know, help them out. So um, that's our whole um, um, goal in this. Some people can, in fact, get rich really quick off of this, but yeah. it's going to involve a lot more risk as well. Um, so just keep that in mind. Patience is key. Don't trade with your emotions. Don't sell your stocks with your emotions because once you sell them and you're losing out on your um, money and everything, you can't gain that back. You lock in a loss and then that's it. You have to just buy back in whenever you can buy back in. So patience is definitely key. Okay. Yeah. All right, and that leads us to step number 10, which is watch, like, and subscribe, subscribe. to our channel, guys. <laughs> uh, again, we are going to be doing videos every month with our top three picks of stocks yes. that we are on, you know, stocks that we are watching for yeah. 